What's going on Geminites? Gem Mint here with today's new comic book day reviews. This is for Wednesday, October 6th, but it's coming out a day late because as you can see, we are not home, we're out and about, and I wasn't able to get the books a day early. But we are going to jump into these reviews. Before we get started, check out the giveaway we got going on. On our road to 100k, we're doing some milestone giveaways every 2,500 subscribers. So this is phase two. We're giving away this Thanos bus by Sideshow Collectibles once we hit 95,000 subscribers. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel, hit the like button, drop a comment, and stay tuned to the end of the video, and I'll give you some more details on the giveaway. All right, guys, we did read three books digitally. The first one we're going to talk about from Image Comics is Decorum, issue five. This is written by Jonathan Hickman with art by Huddleston. And when I say art, it's so funny to me how there's a couple different art styles going on in this book. One is this like immaculately painted uh, sceneries, right? And then you have like what's basically sketches in the next one. Uh, this issue wasn't really too confusing. It's kind of showing uh, three years of training for our new would-be assassin. And uh, just showing the, progress uh, the progression, going out on missions, trying to get her first kill. And she's working with uh, the the mistress, headmistress lady who put faith in her. Uh, it was a good issue. It was entertaining, kind of funny, uh, and uh, progressed the story along. So I definitely enjoyed the Quorum 5. Moving over to Boom Studios by Al Ewing, we have We Only See Them When They're Dead, Issue 2. This is art by Simone DeMeo. So the thing with the art is, it looked like it was good, but it was really hard for me to see it because I was reading a review copy, has huge watermarks on it, and man, I really just should have bought this issue because I really, I struggled to see the artwork here. And honestly, uh, you know, I really liked uh, Issue 1. Uh, I kind of ranted and raved about it. A lot of people jumped on it. But I wasn't really digging this issue, man. This one was less about the space exploration and harvesting these dead gods and more about the crew, which I found super uninteresting, man. I don't know if I'm in the minority here, but I definitely was not feeling this issue. I had that issue with the art, and then the story just really didn't do it for me. But uh, they're kind of go going to uh, new, new realms with what's going on in this story. We only find them when they're dead but what if that's not the only time where we find them so it sounds like they're going to try to hunt some space gods and the last one from the digital stack this one might actually might not even come out today this one might be a, a preview i'm not really sure but from dynamite comics we have dynamite issue one of five this is a mini series kind of a la uh dc or marvel zombies but what's cool about it is that it's combining all of the Dynamite characters into this one zombie story. You got Red Sonia, Vampirella, John Carter, uh, Deja Torres, and, and all those Dynamite characters. And like I said, a, a zombie type story is happening. I like the artwork. It was very clean, kind of creepy. Uh, and I think uh, overall I'm interested. It's a five-issue miniseries. Let's see what uh, the Dynamite universe does during a zombie apocalypse. All right, that's enough of all that. Let's jump into the uh, physical copies. The first one we have is Batman issue 100, the end of the Joker War. Um, this is like a little bit of an oversized issue, kind of like a small trade paperback. And I almost gave this my pick of the week, man. You have James Tiny, uh, James Tiny in the fourth wrapping up the Joker War. Uh, and I don't really know how I feel about it yet, man. It kind of wrapped up, kind of predictable, I guess is the word that I'm looking for. I mean, uh, George Jimenez on the art was incredible. I mean, he's always killing it on this book. And, uh, yeah, I guess, I mean, I guess you did tie up all the loose ends. You had a nice uh, final battle with Joker and Batman. You had a nice battle with uh, Nightwing and uh, with Nightwing and Punchline. You had a nice epilogue, a couple of epilogues, kind of teasing what's to come. Stuff with the Joker, stuff with the, the Clown Hunter was cool. Stuff with Punchline. Punchline kind of looking super whack, man, but she has her own series coming out, so we'll see how it holds up. So uh, I, I thought it was exciting. I was going to give it pick of the week, but then I was like, man, I don't really know how I feel how this Joker War event panned out. So uh, I have to sleep on it a little bit, but um, yeah, it's over. We're going to be on to the next thing, some interesting uh, revelations at the end, and then uh, we'll see where it goes. Uh, then let's talk about this American Vampire, 1976, uh, under DC's Black Label. This is by Scott Snyder with art by Raphael Albuquerque with uh, Dave McCaig. Now, I have not read the uh, first volume of this. I have the omnibus, still haven't gotten around to it. But I, I was able to jump into this uh, without having read that. So I thought it was a great read. I thought the artwork was dope. Uh, the premise is cool. You have this character who was an immortal vampire. He's now immortal. 
but he's still uh, he's still powerful. He's still kind of vampire-ish. You kind of see him dealing with uh, locals, getting into fights. He's not as quick as he used to be, uh, and he's uh, searching to become immortal again. He gets a blast from the past at the end here, and it's an interesting story. So we're going to follow up and see what goes on with American Vampire. Then we have Deceased Dead Planet issue 4 out of 7. This is by Tom Taylor with uh, Harrison, Baldessini, and Burrito. Funny how we had that Dynamite book and then the Deceased book. I thought this was really cool, man. A very uh, New Gods issue, right? You had a, you had your Scott Free, Mr. Miracle. You had uh, Metron with the Mobius chair. Some Dark Side stuff in here. The artwork is always great uh, in this series. This one was kind of different than the other ones. You know, we're trying to see... Uh, we're trying to get the life equation out of Cyborg, and we need the Mobius chair to do it. So that's what this issue is about. I thought it was great. Then we have Batman the Adventure Continues Issue 5. I think it's Issue 5. I didn't mean to pick up the variant. But uh, this is written by Paul Dini. You also have Burnett, uh, Templeton, and Kubina. So we've had uh, Jason Todd lurking in the background of this animated series universe. And he finally makes his presence known. So what we basically get here is a Jason Todd origin story within the Batman animated series universe. How did he become Red Hood? What happened with Robin? Why did him and Batman have a falling out? So all very interesting stuff. Uh, definitely love this series. I'm so happy to see them continue this universe and add new uh, mythos to it. Then we got Justice League issue 54. This is by uh, Joshua Williamson. You have art by uh, Armancio and then you have Ferrado, Ju Ferrado Jr. here. This ties into Dark Knight's Death Metal, and we got a slew of one-shot advertisements in here for, for uh, Death Metal. Uh, I thought this was great, man. You have the Valley of the Starros. So you have uh, what's actually leaking from over in Justice League Odyssey, characters uh, from that run uh, showing up in Justice League here to try to uh, traverse through this Valley of Giant Starros. You know, they are a psychological um, enemy, and they basically get into the heads of Nightwing and Cyborg and all these other characters. Made for some really trippy stuff. The artwork was amazing, uh, especially uh, getting into the heads of these characters. I just thought that it was uh, it played out really well. So was definitely digging this. And I think this is a, a book you should read if you're really reading this Dark Knight Death Metal. Because this, uh, this crew is going to show up in the main storyline. And what happens here uh, could be important. Moving over to Marvel, we have The Amazing Spider-Man. This is issue 49, but it's the legacy issue 850, meaning if they didn't renumber it, it would be at 850. This is by Nick Spencer, and what you have here is three stories, uh, or three parts to the main story, which has art by Humberto Ramos, uh, Ryan Otley, and Mark Bagley. Then you have three backup stories, which don't play into the main story that I didn't really care for, to be honest. But I really dug what they did here with this Sin Eater storyline. The Sin Eater character, crazy powers, he, he's, he's taking powers and uh, removing them from other villains. So the, the, the villain that he takes powers from here... Uh, it's super cool. You guys are going to like it, especially if you're X-Men fans. You know, I had some criticisms about the Spider-Verse squad showing up, but I actually think they played a pretty good role in this book. It wasn't, like, annoying like I thought it was going to be. And then you have the Spider-Man Green Goblin team up. Uh, Norman Osborn kind of uh, paying his debt from Peter saving him back in the day and embarrassing him. So now they're straight enemies again. Uh, I don't know what the A cover was, man. The shop I went to was full of variants, but... Yeah, this is an oversized issue, like a little trade paperback. And uh, overall, I enjoyed it, man. So I'm glad to see um, that it's playing out pretty well. I don't I don't know if this is the end of this arc. I don't think it's the end. So we have issue 50 coming out next. All right, then we have Donny Cates on Thor. Man, I really wanted to give this the pick of the week. Just I really like this issue, man. You had artwork by Aaron Cooter, uh, and you also had Matt Wilson on the book as well. Uh, it was a chill ish issue. I mean, it was very well written. Uh, we're playing off of that anybody can hold the hammer now and just some random Joe Schmo picks it up. Now he's got the power of Thor. Iron Man is freaking out trying to stop it. And Thor really, uh, really flaunts his stuff in this issue. He doesn't need the hammer to have the power of Thor and he has to kind of show Tony Stark that. Uh, and then some nice... Um, a nice ending with, with uh, Thor and that Joe Schmo guy and kind of... You know, letting him live out a fantasy of his. So it was a nice, chill issue. Nothing epic, nothing major like we have been seeing from this run. But I really still enjoyed it. Then we have Star Wars Issue 7. This is by Sol, Rosanas, and Rosenberg. So this is the uh, beginning of a new arc, The Will of Tarkin, Predators. 
So this one, I mean, I enjoyed the issue, but it's dealing with a bunch of characters that we don't really know. We we haven't really met them. Kind of interesting. It's kind of like this. Um, uh, there was these three apprentices, and only one could be the apprentice of the general on the empire. And what is cool about this is you get the perspective from the enemies. Like, hey, I had friends die in the Death Star uh, catastrophe. So that was kind of interesting. And, and then this character that... Uh, becomes the apprentice we see a big failure uh, failure of hers and it is pretty interesting but it's kind of like oh, i don't really care about any of these characters uh, i did enjoy the artwork especially the stuff in space when you get to see these fleets of ships and um, there was a little bit of a space battle here so it was an okay issue now that i think about it all right we got rise of the ultraman issue number two this is by kyle higgins also by uh is it matt groom uh mana and uh Grunagern on the artwork here a little confused on this issue. I got to be honest. I can't tell what's happening now, what's happening in the past. I can't really tell who the main character is because it seems like, you know, we have another event. There was an event in 1966. Uh, what is it? The USP shot down the uh, UFO and there was an Ultraman there. Uh, now we have another event and it seems like our main character is kind of mind melding with him and they're learning from each other and uh, basically have to convince each other to merge and become ultra man you have an ultra and you have a man so together they're ultra man they got to fight the kaijus apparently earth is uh, in prime position to really be uh, destroyed by kaiju and we don't even know it so that's kind of the premise of what's going on here you know i thought the artwork was okay i mean it was just kind of uh, typical what you would expect from uh, modern marvel books so it was okay i mean we'll keep it up and see what happens with Ultraman. Then we have three issues from Ten of Swords, which actually worked out great because you have parts three, four, and five. Uh, the first one is with Wolverine. And actually, the Wolverine and the... Uh, it's Wolverine 6 and X-Force 10. They kind of really are the same story. It, it, it's back-to-back, -back, right? So this is written by Benjamin Percy. I think it's both of these issues, right? Yeah. Uh, and uh, Bogdanovich on the artwork. And Wilson. So it's the same creative team. So even though it's Wolverine and it's X-Force... Uh, it's basically the same story that continues from one comic to the other. Great story, man. The artwork was dark. It was gritty. Uh, Wolverine being tasked to find the sword of... I'm never going to pronounce this right if I don't check. Marumasa. So he has to find the uh, the bladesmith Marumasa. He needs the blade. But uh, not only was Wolverine tasked to find this for one of the ten champions of Krakoa... But so was the champion of Araco. What is his name? Solemn, I want to say? I really like this character. He had kind of like a Mr. Sinister swag. So basically with Ten of Swords, it's going to be a tournament. You have ten champions from Krakoa and from Araco, which was the same uh, island at one time. But it was split. Deals with Apocalypse. Deals with the original Four Horsemen. Uh, and it was really good, man. I liked the, the confrontation Wolverine has with Krakoa. Like, dude, you wanted this to happen. Like... Basically, they're fighting Krakoa's war for them, and Krakoa kind of just like owning it, not really, uh, not really denying it. They basically Wolverine's got to go to hell again to find uh, the the bladesmith, and then he he basically teams up with his with his would be enemy, right? So that's basically what happens in, the, in these issues. Ten of Swords. The beginning is all about these twenty combatants finding their swords. Uh, and that's what happens in Marauders 13, which is part 5 of this event. And yo, this is the pick of the week. Totally blew me away. I did not expect this to be the pick of the week. This is by Vita, Ayala, uh, Lali, and Delgado. I was blown away, man. This is basically Storm needs to find her sword. And her sword is in Wakanda. And Wakanda doesn't want to just give it up like that. Shachala is not there for the approval. This is the type of relic that if you remove it, you're going to cause... A civil war within Wakanda like people are gonna die if you just take uh, I believe it's the Stormbreaker the sword which is basically like the densest vibranium sword ever or the most dense is probably how you say that it's the Skybreaker Stormbreaker is Thor right the Skybreaker so uh, you know we don't we don't have time to wait around for T'Challa to give the blessing to take this sword the, each uh, contestant has three days to get their sword and meet up in the circle of trust so she just goes and takes it man uh, Shuri was not having it and uh, you really saw Storm uh, being powerful being strong she tried to go about it diplomatically but she's got to do what she got to do to get this sword man so this was my pick it's like an oversized thick issue and I really liked how uh, 
how this was written, man, with the Wakanda stuff, the Krakoa stuff, kind of, uh, we need to save everyone, man. If I don't show up with this sword, we already lost and everything in Earth gets destroyed. So, um, I was really surprised by this one, pleasantly surprised. Great storm issue. And guys, that's all the issues for today. Read them all out on the road. Look at this stack, man. And I always dread when they have these big trade papers, trade paperback size issues. Uh, let me know what your pick of the week was in the comments down below and check out the details on the giveaway. All right, guys, in order to be eligible for the giveaway, you have to be a subscriber to the channel. So go ahead and hit the notification bell, hit the like button on this video, and most importantly, drop a comment below. Once we hit 95,000 subscribers, I'm gonna pick a random video where I promoted this giveaway and use a random YouTube comment generator to draw a winner. You could be any age, any location. We will ship this worldwide. So go ahead and comment down below to enter. All right, guys, I appreciate you watching. As always, stay minty fresh and check out some of the other comic book day reviews.